right, we are two days away from processing chickens again. Two days away, that is so soon. It comes up so much faster every single time. And the day itself usually doesn't go as fast as we'd like. It usually ends up going a little slow because it just takes some time to get the whole process done for us. And now getting close to the day, we have some things that we need to finish up, some last minute things that we need to make sure that are prepared and ready to go so that we can get this day done. Hopefully flawless, no problems, but there's usually always something that pops up. The good thing about doing things over and over and over again is eventually you start to find what is the best practice and what is the way that is gonna make it the most efficient. I think eventually, it seems like we change it up every single time trying to add something that's gonna help us. This being one of them. So what I wanna do here, I'm just gonna undo some of this wood, rearrange it a little bit, more stability, and I'll show you the final little touch that I need to do to this. For anyone processing chickens, you might wanna start doing this one. These stainless steel cones are pretty nice, but I did something before where I tried cutting this and now it's gotten just really sharp and dangerous down here. So I ordered a couple new cones that should be coming in the mail today, which I'm excited to show you guys. But unfortunately they're not here yet, so we're just gonna have to keep going forward without the cones. Right now it's not gonna look much different than what I just previously had. The only things I really did was now it has more support than it did in the past. And it's a little shorter because we do the chop block method, so we wanna make sure that the chickens don't feel anything. It's just, and it's done. So what we did before in the past is like, we'll have like this stump right here now that I just cut. And we'd be way down and then we have to try to raise this chicken way up, like higher up there, like here. So lowering this down should minimize the amount of time it takes to get them into one of the cones. And until the cones come in, I don't want to continue working on the last feature I wanted to add on to this. Because without the cones, I can't do the measurement that I need to know. So we're gonna wait, we're gonna come back to this as soon as the cones come in the mail. So overall, our first season with this chicken tractor has been a learning curve, to say the least. This chicken tractor that we house all these Cornish Cross in to raise our own meat is 10 by 16. We just received it from a local farm that was next to us that was selling it. We figured we wanted to up our production eventually. We wanted more room for our chickens. And this chicken tractor definitely did that. 10 by 16 up our previous one that we have that you can kind of see here in the background. That is 8 by 6. That chicken tractor now can have other purpose for us or we can just have more chickens. Like whatever we can't fit in here to go put over there, separate them so there's more room. But like I said, the first season for this, realizing that number one, that it wasn't full predator proof that we really needed to have. We ended up losing two chickens right away, one completely gone, we don't know where it ever went, got obviously taken by a predator. The second one we got saw that it looked like a raccoon pulled it possibly through that chicken tractor and tried to get it and one, oh shoot, I forgot. We actually did lose a third one as well. And that one got caught under a two by four that was inside these corners here in this. So that was another thing that we had to do was lower that piece of two by four down to the ground so that nothing was getting stuck under there because that's where they were all huddling up and sleeping. So we did lose three Cornish cross chickens in this process of using this chicken tractor. And now, with the reinforcements, putting cloth wire all around the end of it so that making sure that no animals like a raccoon were gonna get their paws in and grab any of these chickens through. And other than that, it's been pretty well. Uh, it actually moves fairly easy for being so big. We've been able to pull it along. As you can see, we do have some grass that'll need some growing back, but that'll happen. We've never had a problem with seeing like this spot and be like, oh no, it's like completely dead. It does come back and it usually comes back really good. We are excited to not have to come out here and pull these chicken tractors for the rest of this year. So in two days, that's all it's gonna be. We are going to not have to do this anymore. And it will be, <clears throat> it will be one of those kind of rewarding. And you, as I always say, it's rewarding, but it also is, a, it's a day to stomach usually. As I was just saying with this chicken tractor right here, the one that we used to house our meat birds in beforehand, we have four of our Splash Moran roosters in here. 
This is what happens when you hatch out your own chickens. You end up getting usually more roosters than you need and you gotta find either a home for them, find a purpose for them. For them, we've been raising them along with our meat birds so that in two days, it'll just be a few, but it'll just be a few extra chickens, which will make up for the three that we lost, actually. We'll have four roosters in here. That will also be a part of the processing day going along. And ever since I put this roosting bar in there for them, you can see the ones on it right there. They have definitely liked this chicken tractor more and more. And it is getting cold for everyone who always wonders, like, could you do this for egg layers or anything? You could do this. Uh, during the winter, I probably would suggest being so open air, you'd probably have to cover it up a little bit with some wrap and all that. But this is perfectly acceptable. These chickens have lived, I think, very happily in here. We move them on fresh grass all the time, so they're always getting to new green. And this is a lot better than a standstill coop. Or maybe try to find to put some wheels on a smaller coop so you can keep moving around on the little pieces of grass even. But yes, that is also, that will also be an empty chicken tractor for the year, which we are excited to just, as I stated earlier, not have to come back and do all that and just kind of get it down to the winter time where we can kind of relax and start to dream up what the next year is gonna look like. Because we have pigs that are hopefully gonna be having babies. You wanna go see, let's go see. These would be the papa pigs. Yep. Hi guys. And then these two will hopefully be the mama pigs. So we're getting close. We will wait probably to the new year still. So around January where we're going to get one of those females with one of these males and vice versa so that they are in their breeding pairs for the new year. And we'll see when that time will come. When will we be worried about little baby piglets coming out? That will be exciting. And then all we got is this three flocks of chickens. That hasn't changed. So let's go see when these cones are gonna come in so we can finish and I can explain how that operates. All right, the new cones came in. I know they don't look like cones right now, but I'll prove it to you here in one second. It is a cone. See, look, I can see right through it. It is a cone, it's just actually made out of like a really nice tough plastic. And I know normally I'm not crazy about plastic things compared to stainless steel. I do think for the ease of cleaning this out, this is gonna be much better. And what I really like about these is, let me get the other one that I haven't made just yet to show you. It has three different adjustable sizes on this cone. So that if you're gonna do bigger chickens, like for meat chickens, or if you wanna do a turkey, or if you're gonna do smaller chickens for any reason, that this can go to three different sizes that it's gonna pop out here at the end. Right now I have it on the medium sized. So if you can see, medium sized. And we are gonna get this now hooked up to this thing. And I still haven't really showed you. This is cool, but this isn't even exactly the thing I was gonna show you. So these cones are actually a lot longer than I thought they were gonna be. So that doesn't leave me much room for what I wanted to do, but I still think it ended up working out. Instead of attaching these five gallon buckets to a board right there, we won't need to do it because I think they're gonna slide right underneath them, which is gonna work out perfect. Let's see. Oh yeah. It's a like seamless, perfect fit. So just so everyone knows, this is not a sponsor. This is just a thing that we found online, just on Amazon. These are from Yardbird, which is a good company I know that people like to use. And the adjustableness and the size of these things is remarkable. I mean, here, this is probably a medium size, one of these cones. And if you put it up to it, you can see the difference that it's a huge difference. The, the size up here is a little bit more the same, but if you even look at that, look at the... And this is still just on the medium setting of these things. I think between doing this, going from the block to going in here, and then this now I might need to change, but the way these cones are set up, they're a little bit more slanted. Here, I'll get a side view. As you can see, so this doesn't cover it as much. I made this for the old one so that when the chickens would go in there, 
you'd put this up so that like they wouldn't pop out as easy. These might be deep enough that we don't have to worry about that. Um, that'll be something that we'll have to go to see. That could be the, the next kind of change that might need to happen. But this is a great setup. And for anyone who is wondering, like I said again, I'll try to put it in the description. These are from Yardbird Plastic. They're adjustable so you can switch the sizes up. And they are just a perfect size. And now letting these drain right into those five gallon buckets afterwards, not having to use our wheelbarrow like that we did before, trying to jam it underneath and that not really fully working. This should really almost catch all of it, which is a huge change from what we've had in the past for it. It's getting a little later now, as you can see, it's starting to get a little darker and fall is here. All the trees starting to lose all their leaves. It's getting darker sooner. Our pigs, they're not bothering us as much because they don't need to have such a long day and they want to eat the whole entire long day. This shed, by the way, from Patio Well has still been really serving its purpose for us. We have these tools. Instead of me having a spot where I need to go inside the house to go find them all, having it back here where I do most of the work here in our backyard, it has been a game changer for us. These Cornish cross chickens and processing them, it's really almost like the signaling of the end of the year and the end of a homesteading year for us, which has been one to forget sometimes, but you got to take everything on the chin. Um, everything happens for a reason in these things. We'll definitely do a video kind of just summary, uh, summarizing the whole year, but the start of our homesteading year was not good, that's for sure. And now here we are getting ready to end it. I know that it's only end of October, so there's still two more months and there will be things going on and we still have a few things that we need to do. But this really does it after the garden. We just spent some time tearing up the garden, getting it all torn away, breaking it up, because we'll have some stuff that we need to set up for that. Um, but this, this is like the last major project of the year. And processing chickens is that for us. With four kids, <laughs> uh, it does take a little bit of time for us always to get it all done. We usually do, and I am. Um, I'm looking forward to a little bit of a break from all the homesteading stuff and just try to chill out, dream up a new idea, what's going to happen next year, and get ready for the business again. <laughs> Have a great day and a better tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the next one.